Why, hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages. My name is Dogma Fuji 3 and welcome back to Hearts Iron 4 in the New Order Last Days of Europe as Us Sisolsk. Formerly known as Komi, and probably about to be known as Komi again somewhat quickly. So in the last video, we went ahead, had our elections. Those didn't really go well, so uh, we did a little coup. Well, the, the right did a little coup. And so we're probably going to have left to a little coup at, from here. And then we're probably going to go ahead and uh, coup back and see if we can get it to Aberitsky. And if that doesn't work, we'll rinse and repeat. Let's go ahead. I guess we'll have to secure the process or the concept. And then I think this might give us some extra Tabaritsky support. I want to say. Before we embark on the journey towards Eurasia, we must ensure that our support base is secure. If we start building a top weak foundation and the entire structure will eventually topple, Eurasianists must be placed in key offices, propaganda distributed, and our civilian supporters protected. Let's get our... take a bit more of a hit to legitimacy. Secure the concept. Do that again. The guns of Passionary. We have one of the largest paramilitaries in the Republic. It is, let us put it to good use. We have a central government building in our hand, but there are still many important pil public buildings, transport hubs, warehouses, and infrastructure centers that lie in enemy hands. Let us set forth our brave Eurasianist soldiers to claim what is rightfully ours. So I, I'm going to guess that gives us some extra support base. <clears throat> Valentina filled, f fiddled with her pens, as she, he usually did at times of strife like these. There were many, gathered from all the four corners of Russia by collectors and tradesmen, and their nibs ranged from the thick and stylistic to the thinnest of thin. It was a forgotten arc, and he was a, a middling collector, a quiet pride from the old factory work, something to do with his free time, something the government couldn't take away. However, today, he had different goals in mind. He would choose one of his largest nibs, almost the size of a vegetable stock, and grabbed a red inkwell from his study. There was work to be done, heralded by the ring of a doorbell. He raised his hands out the window, clapping twice. No surveillance agents nearby, and closed the window seal. Comrade Bushkov would not tolerate lateness. Bushkov had brought that little scamp Yosef with him. Out of pity or some misguided sense of duty, Valentina could not say. Valentina ruffled the little boy's hair, told him not to touch anything in the attic, and got to work on the massive canvas laid out in the living room. Touch upon touch, the letters rose in brilliant Cyrillic font. Workers rise up. Oppression must end, or the strike will not. And with them, the little flourishes Valentina had practiced. Hammers, sickles, and stars seemed to take flight upon the carefully woven synthetic paper. As the canvas seemed to fill with color and energy, Pushkov nodded. It's time to bring the little artwork into the open. Yosef skipped with his excitement as they neared the crowded masses of the old factory. <sighs> A furious mass of masked workers and angry signs. Valentina gestured rudely, and Yosef, nodding, took the banner's edge and unfurled it into the air. The banner took flight, joining the hundreds already in the air, and yelled of exuberance arose from the heightened hiding crowd. Smiling Valentina joined in. Though many more would join the procession in protests like it across Sikdivgar as the industry of Komi ground to the halt. The ro workers' tide rose, a wave of garish red, and the government stood helpless to stop it. This is foolish. Just get back to work! All of you. Okay, guns with Passionary. Excellent. It was time to expand the newly formed Eurasian National Army, and Gumilov needed recruits. An army without soldiers was a pitiful one indeed. Gumilov had several options before them. He could use his newfound powers, leader of the Republic, to expand the conscription laws, although it could cause some unrest, and there is no guarantee of quality. Or Gumilov could, despite his dislike for the man, ask Sergei Tabaritsky to lend his elite stormtroopers for the Eurasian National Army, who would form the core of his new military. The obvious problem with the plan was that the stormtroopers were, above else, loyal to Tabaritsky. They may swear allegiance to some long-dead czar, but Tabaritsky was their de facto leader. If he relied on Tabaritsky's stormtroopers too much, Tabaritsky could use his influence over them to, in order to take power. 
this choice was effectively a question of quality versus quantity. Expand and conscription would give them quantity, although they would likely take longer to be trained, and likely wouldn't be as effective as stormtroopers. Stormtroopers may be comparatively few in number and potentially politically dissident, but their fanaticism made them a terrifying effective force. Well, the elite stormtroopers shall be the backbone of our forces. More despotists support. And with that, we wait and gain PP. Oh. So I'm going to guess Stalina's next. Despite the fall of the government, the Republican army has refused to surrender. Now resistance still sought out the countryside, engaging in guerrilla campaigns against our government and our forces. They aren't a direct threat to our government, but they are keeping us from securing our hold over Comey. It's clear that we should have been more thorough during our coup. Most recent news to reach our government only helps to confirm such perspectives. Apparently one of our army patrols traveling between cities has been attacked. The culprits were the Republican army holdouts, who set up an ambush on International Internationale Nia Street. The encounter was brief but bloody, and our forces took multiple casualties. They were forced to return to Sikdivkar, and apparently our soldiers failed to eliminate the rebels that attacked them. We need to send a more prepared force to snuff out this holdout, and we need to discuss the Republican problem further. They may be a nuisance, but they're not a threat. Oh, well, I don't know about that. Failed. And... First detachments of Republican Guard arrived in Sikhtiv Guard and trucks, blocking the streets and taking over the bridges. They crossed over the river, quickly asserting control over parts of the city. The paths leading in and out of the capital were sealed, placed under guard by advancing patrols. Even the river was taking over as men on boats prevented anyone from taking to their vessels. From there, they too came to assist their comrades. The swiftness of their arrival and of their advances caught the forces of the current government off guard. Police were neutralized, and any response by the city's own garrison was met with a greater one. In no time, they were turned. Seconds turned to minutes, and now the whole city was secured. Patrols now raced to capture City Hall, leaving bodies and spent casings in their wake. Without the security forces, the current government was no more. For a to surrender at gunpoint, officials abandoned their buildings, hands up as they streamed into waiting trucks. Those who resisted were beaten to compliance or shot for ceaseless defiance. But at last we done it. The restoration of the Republic was accomplished, punctuated by the broad declaration of a state of emergency, soon enough for victorious Republican Guard, and their supporters made their way to greet the returning president. From the steps of a hall of sick of guard, legitimate government can begin its term. Comey is now in good hands, to be developed into a proper republic, one free of what can no longer be relied upon. Long live the republic. We have the counter coup done. Colsagen is back. For how long, though? And that's the question. Draw some forces. It's a cute idea, but... The far right have never been shy to go into combat. What can only be described as a sick glorification of violence and martyrdom impels fascists and other such groups to charge suicidally at far stronger foes, even when moderation would be a smarter tactic. Sometimes audacity pays off, as superior forces occupied by seemingly more important matters overlook a hidden threat until too late. Monarchist officer offshoot group sent shivers down the spines of Comey's civilians and police force recently when it seized a fortified arsenal in central Sikhtiv car and made it out with a great quantity of firearms and explosives. Despite being outnumbered significantly by the police, the right-wingers' ferocity and their use of ambush tactics made the attack a massacre. Ten police officers were killed, with at least twice as many wounded, with only a single assailant killed in the response. Now even more heavily armed, Comey's right-wing ink will likely continue in this quasi bloody quasi-insurgency against the state. These days, it seems as though the government is but a sheep surrounded by slavering wolves, with no way to escape the, or punish its, these vicious enemies. Is Comey doomed to have its throat torn out? I don't know. All I know is that we can scavenge for more loot through all of this nonsense. We can keep scavenging. Mm -hmm. 
Same events. Makes it makes it easier on me. Adolf Hitler is dead. Ding dong. Oh. <clears throat> Armed policemen and soldiers patrolled in front of a legislative assembly. Riflemen on the roof of the building kept a lookout for any sources of trouble. Orders from the top were, or, were to stay alert for any attempt to derail the Republic's government. The hailstorm came as a surprise to the government's defenders. The clanking sounds echoed all across the plaza as metallic gas canisters bounced off the walls of the assembly. From the mechanical hailstorm came the chemical mist, an opaque cloud of tear gas. The roof sharpshooters watched in dismay as their usual view of the plaza was taken away. A few of the more proactive riflemen urged her comrades to head inside the building. They ever stood numbly, looking over the white shroud. On the ground, the policemen choked and gagged. Struggling to keep good order, they hit the deck and began crawling towards the legislative assembly, intent on regrouping indoors, before anything in the black figures were onto them. Gas masks availing no expression as policemen were beaten into submission by Tabertsky's men. The men of the assembly could offer no resistance as the men of the OVRI entered the room. The masked soldiers secured every exit as their commander walked to the pod speaker's podium. For years now, you and your ilk have blasphemously carried out your business here. It is mercy that Lord Tabaritsky, regent for Tsar Alexei, comes to free you from sin. The government of degenerate liberals and barbarous Bolsheviks is dissolved. Long live the Tsar, and long live Lord Regent Tabaritsky. Tabaritsky's coup. Cool. Here he is, boys. Beautiful. The story of Sergei Vladimirovich Tabaritsky is an, as, as anomalous as his personality and political views. Born to a Russian merchant and a Jewish seamstress, Tabaritsky was nevertheless a staunch Russian monarchist and earnest anti-Semite from an early age, trying to get rid of the cane seal inherited from his mother. Becoming an exile in the Weimar Republic following the Russian Civil War, he acquainted himself with Russian reactionary circles, reinforcing his beliefs and helping to spread the infamous Protocols of Zion in Germany. Along with his longtime friend, Boris Shabelsky Bork, he assassinated a former Russian cadet politician, Vladimir Dmitrovich Nabokov, in an attempt to bring revenge upon those who he considered the main instigators of the revolution that ruined the Russian Tsardom. As the Nazis came to power in Germany, he became one of the most enthusiastic collaborators with the hell, Nazi regime among the white emigres, hoping that the German dominance would pave a road for restoration of monarchy in Russia. Like others, Tabertsky joined Vladimir in Vyatka, but soon he became displeased with whom he claimed was the imposter Tsar, sincerely believing that the true emperor of Russia, Tsar Vic Alexei, miraculously survived and will arrive to his subjects should they prove their loyalty to their rightful rulers. Few in Vyatka could share his eccentric beliefs, but soon he found his following in Ussitovsk. A person too unhinged for his enemies and friends alike, Tabaritsky, however, succeeded to outplay them all and emerged as the sole ruler of a city, claiming the title of the Imperial Legion of Tsar Alexei II for himself. Few expected Tabaritsky's delusions to come true, but few doubt his rule will be anything but a ferocious one. His zeal is fueled by long-standing hatred for Bolsheviks and anyone who betrayed the Russian Tsar in his darkest hour. So we have lost 55 stability. We're at negative, well, we're at negative 55 stability, I should say. So already, let's crack down on some instability. And here we are. Many within the government never considered that Sergei Dabrowski could ever be a threat. A raving lunatic of an old man, they called him, obsessed with a boy long dead. They would say that power would always lie within the hands of the Republic or the party or the army. If only they were still alive to see Tabaritsky now. Henceforth, Sergei Tabaritsky will serve as the regent of these lands until the true emperor, Alexei, is found. No longer, no matter how long it takes, a Romanov will sit upon the throne once more. 
But that will come tomorrow. For now, there are traitors to deal with. Ooh, what do we want to work on? Let's crush the institutions. The Republic of Comey has long operated under a democratic presidency, accompanied by a 200-seat legislature. These ineffective institutions weaken Comey and are exploited by Russia's many, many enemies. As it stands, they only subvert the regents, and by extension, the emperor's will, which is unacceptable. If the emperor's glorious vision for Russia is to be restored, then these structures must be purged and the traitors within eliminated. can also consolidate our power base. So let's go ahead and do that. We can also do it one more time, so let's do it. And camera rover won there. So Tomsk won against uh, the Siberian Black Army, which is interesting. Uh-oh. Well, it is thus necessary that the individual should finally come to realize his own ego is of no importance in comparison with the existence of a nation. Adolf Hitler, so it begins. I'll have to wait and see who ends up winning. Consolidate our power base a little bit more. Crush the institutions. No more unwritten rules. There are three unwritten rules in these lands. One, no killing of the leaders of the many factions for the good of the Republic. Two, prevent unnecessary death. Aid the injured if you can spare it. And three, do not interfere with the lives of civilians. These rules restrict the region's plans and allow for the Jewish and Bolshevik infiltrators to grow in power. The factions must be eliminated, for they do not recognize the Emperor and in fact conspire against him. This is unacceptable and must be dealt with immediately. Our stormtroopers should not have to spare a thought for their safety of the Emperor's enemies, and any restriction upon their righteous actions must be eliminated. Civilians are the greatest place for Bo Jewish and Bolshevik infiltrators to hide once we have destroyed their power base. The civilians, too, must be integrated into the region's grand plan to rebuild Russia in preparation for the true Emperor's return. Let's give her a start. So I'll lay your power base once more. Shadow looms over France. Ostland has fallen apart. <clears throat> and the bombings have stopped. Well, never mind that. Right now, we can have no more disorder. Disorder is the greatest enemy of the people, fueled by cursed Bolsheviks and Jewish infiltrators. And there's no greater source of disorder in these lands than the legislature. Its squabbling deputies, its inefficiency, its Bolshevik influence. This heretical, unholy structure shall be torn down, so that its rotten influence can be purged. Its deputies shall be rounded up and dealt with like Judeo-Bolshevik enemies should be. Under the Regency, all that shall remain is order, efficiency and devotion to the emperor the true emperor of russia demands it <clears throat> sergey tabaritsky before his court and his commanders he was formulating a plan from within his bunker the republic was weak and the geo bolshevik menace and the perverted decadent republicans were too busy fighting each other noticed tabaritsky plotting his first moves there was ever a time to strike and usurp the Republic in the name of the rightful Emperor of Russia. It was now. He instructed his court and commanders to grab the guns, the bombs, and the gas. No punches would be pulled in this critical hour. The only remaining question for the Regent to answer was how to deploy these weapons. Tabertsky could target that cursed Bolshevik traitor Suslov who had been directing the communists from the shadows. No doubt killing Suslo would be a wise decision, and was mo most likely planning some foul operation to corrupt Siktivkar even further. Alternatively, Tabertsky could target at the centrist emergency headquarters, considering that Tabertsky's informants have located the building. 
Such a strike could decapitate the often irritating Republican forces. Tabrowski was quite tempted to put the final nail in the Republican coffin. While both factions would have to be purged so Tabrowski could prepare Russia for its rightful return to the Empire, there could be only one for a strike. Once Tabrowski chose who to strike, the other would most likely prepare for such an attack, making the region's position less certain. However, he could simply choose to strike both at the same time. A comprehensive decapitating strike would leave little opposition in the region's way. This would be a risky maneuver, almost too risky, but if it succeeded... I'm going to save real quick. <sighs> Destroy both of them. Leave no survivors. That's an order. Burning fucking churches to ground, what the fuck? If I do this, will we just gain legitimacy? Is that how it works? I think that is how it works. So Slov was tense, sitting within a safe room. Suslov, Andropov, and several of Suslov's men were waiting for Suslov's forces to gather. Suslov wa Suslov's watch continued to tick, over and over, mocking him. He glanced at the watch again, and it was still early. His first forces weren't ready yet. Suslov didn't know why he was getting so tense over the matter, and Suslov constantly kept his watch despite time not moving any faster. So Slov took off his watch and stuck it in his pocket so that he could better focus on regaining his composure. He closed his eyes and exhaled, the safe room silent aside from a mu muffled ticking. Suddenly, a metallic scraping sound rang out through the room, putting everyone on edge. That was a sound of a grate being moved. Then the scraping sound ceased, and a new sound began. A terrible sound, the sound of hissing gas. Someone was attempting to gas Suslov, and Suslov guessed who it could be. And Dropov attempted to open the door, but it was blocked in. Suslov's men threw their weight against the door, but it wouldn't budge from its position. The stormtrooper on the other side of the door stood at attention, rifle raised. His makeshift barricade was working, and now all that was left to do was confirm the kills. Slowly the shouting and coughing grew quieter, and the loud thuds grew weaker and weaker. The stormtrooper heard the shouting become replaced with a barely audible sobbing, and a few muffled coughs later. <coughs> it was silent. Stormtrooper waited two more minutes, and then left to report Suslov's death to the region. The Shadow Master has made his last move. Mikhail Suslov is dead. The Clash of Shadows effect has, has been uh, taken down. The influence of the left has been reduced, and our legitimacy rate is going to increase even more. A well, lot worked, which is nice. English Civil War began. Oh, fuck. <clears throat> Selena walked down the street in a nondescript gray suit, her hair tied up in a simple ponytail, and a submachine gun in her hands. Her days of wearing white were behind her now that bands of stormtroopers roamed the streets. It would make her too recognizable. She was escorted by a bodyguard in plain clothing, bearing an AK in case anything happened. Stalina was late for her meeting, and she began to quicken her pace as a safe house appeared down the street. The Republican forces had been using the small tailor as their emergency headquarters, and Kolstjin, Vosnensky, and Morozov had surely arrived already. Stalina would already have been there if that patrol hadn't forced her into the detour. As Delina drew closer and closer to the building, something felt off. She slowed gradually to halt, trying to figure out why she felt off. Suddenly a shockwave knocked Stalina and her bodyguard to the ground, even though they were a block away from the explosion. Stalina lied there on the pavement, rattled but alive. The realization slammed into her as she watched while a flaming husk of rubble in front of her. 
Stalina was the last democratic leader left in Comey. She was all that remained of the Republic. The Republic is dead. Vosnensky is dead. Kolsigin is dead. Stalina is still alive. But... Oh, God. I'm sorry, Kolsigin. Back in the day, rulers were chosen by God to rule. It was their divine right. Whatever was the will of these divine monarchs was the will of heaven itself. When the foul Bolsheviks took power, they disrespected the will of the emperor, and therefore the will of God. While the regent's authority is earthly and unworthy of such a description, it must be made clear that the regent serves heaven's greatest and most important servant upon this earth, the emperor. Emperor Alexei's divine will must not be disrespected. And any such sin shall be dealt with swiftly and brutally. It is the divine right of Holy Russia's empire. Look at our legitimacy. Look at Muscovy and Jesus Christ, it's that's falling apart quickly. Oh god. Well, unleash the guards. The region has many loyal followers, but none more loyal than his stormtroopers. This paramilitary organization's duties is to enforce the will of Emperor Alexei. These fanatical soldiers shall be called upon to destroy the region's numerous enemies, who wage open rebellion in the streets. In order to ensure the region's plans are carried out, these soldiers must be righteous, courageous, and merciless in the face of the enemy. They must strike fear into the hearts of the regency's enemies, and destroy any trace of their foul influence left within these lands. So, uh, the gamut worked out pretty well, I gotta say. South African War. No one starts a war, or rather, no one is sent to do so, without first being clear in his mind what he intends to achieve by that war, and how he intends to conduct it. Harold G. Moore. We're beating... We've been receiving scattered but consistent reports all morning about a raid upon the outskirts of a city of Siktivkar by an army of Republican holdouts. Truly, army is being quite generous. We've been attacked by men with makeshift weapons and small arms. No one we've interviewed has been able to give a straight answer on what they're after, but witness reports that they were focusing more on our defenses than upon our populace. Additionally, a few were spotted scribbling in notebooks, suggesting that this might be the probing force before a much larger operation. Fortify everything. Only the guards, the black brigades are hanging in there. I haven't seen that one before, I think. If I have, it's been a very long time. Let's open up the arsenals. Many bare military organizations patrol these lands, led by those who would deny the Emperor's authority. To the more effectively to more effectively deal with those traitors, we may make use of the extensive Siktivkar arsenal. It ranges from non lethal tear gas to devastating supplies of chlorine gas. We have no need for such extravagant measures. Shall find their purpose later. For now, tear gas and similar armaments shall prove sufficient for eliminating our current enemies. Descent and rebellion should not be tolerated under the Regent's watch. So, Siktivkar arsenal is replaced with unrestricted chemical warfare. <clears throat> the Regent may rule Siktivkar. The city is not yet prepared for the Emperor's return is a wretched hive of Jewish infiltrators, Bolsheviks, and Republican traitors. The city is a disgrace, and it is clear that the city must be cleansed in the name of the true Emperor of Russia. Luckily, Tabritsky has two tools ready to conduct this purge. The National Army may not be the best troops, 
but they are numerous and sufficiently obedient enough to be used for the region's plans. The National Army shall secure the civilian population and patrol the former Republicans to Republic's territory, locating and destroying distance and rebels. The Shumoviki, the region's finest men and fanatic servants of the true emperor, the Shumoviki are of highest caliber, ready to do the region's bidding without question. The enemy could be Jews, the Tatars, or, Bol or Bolsheviks. Vashtormoviki will destroy them all the same. That's why Vashtormoviki's job will be to hunt down and destroy any scum too difficult to remove with the National Assembly alone. The enemies of the Emperor's regime will learn to feel that Shtormoviki, but they shall find no mercy, no salvation. These lands shall be wiped clean of the foul influence these traitors continue to spread. No matter how many have to die to achieve it. Resistance is futile. Well, we're back in the positive stability-wise, at least. No bogey smarty. Is that the funny nation? Yep, funny antichrist guy. There we go. Beautiful. Uh, and see, it looks like South Africa went the gamer route. For now, let's put no limit to anything. The enemies of the region are more powerful and more populous than initially thought. While we have not yet been forced to use more extreme measures of a sick car arsenal, their time is now. Chlorine gas and similar weapons are needed in order for our stormtroopers to destroy the region's enemies. No more limitations to our troops' effectiveness will be tolerated, even if it means the death count will begin to dramatically rise. If it serves the will of the Emperor, then no other path is necessary. We could raise St. George. Another fucking church burnt to the ground. Jesus. How many churches are left in here? How many churches are... Well, it's rural Russia, so it's probably a fair few. Still burned down. No limits. Now it's time for the end of the Republic. Democracy. That was the goal of the foul traitors who overthrew the divine rules of Russia. This heretical concept's end draws near. The Republic has fallen, been destroyed by the region's righteous followers. It's time for the region to announce this fact to be a formal reality. From this day forward, the Republic is hereby officially dissolved, and henceforth, these lands are now to be ruled by the Regency. This Regency, regency shall be held by Sergei Tabaritsky until the true Emperor of Russia is found. Long live Emperor Alexei of Russia. Praise be. The bureaucracy of the Republic was the second most loathsome trait of the Republic. If the Republican sentiment is being crushed, the region has set at his eyes upon the Republic's bloated corpse. The new Russian Emperor, Bayer, under the vision of a true Emperor of Russia, much of the Republic's old positions are unnecessary. If it is unnecessary, then it shall be destroyed. From Tabarisky sat a pile of papers, all closing various offices and positions across the various branches of government. First, those who operate the elections of the Republic. Democracy is a heretical idea used to dethrone the divine servant of God, and so they will be removed. Next were the courts, who are redundant when the regent, and eventually the emperor, upon its glorious return, can do their job for them. The regent's government will be better off without these positions, especially since many of these judges hold disgusting ideas that go against everything the emperor stands for. The military police can be entirely be replace any civilian law enforcement will be less sympathetic to traitorous scum. Lots of redundant ministries and positions shall be removed, and the region will finally have something resembling an efficient state in its hands, ready for the Emperor's return arrival. Those who prop up this bloated system must also be purged in order to heal this tumor-ridden state. Anyone whose loyalty can't be made certain shall be removed from office, and any who protest this dissent can be made can be dealt with, like the rest of Usik-Sisolsk dissents. Dissidents. They can be made an example in order to keep the rest of them in line. These empty seats will be replaced by loyal obedient OVRI members, ready to facilitate the Emperor's restoration. With a drastic reduction in positions just recently implemented, the relatively small number will not become an issue. 
This new state is not ideal, and will never be ideal without the Emperor's presence and guidance, but it will prove sufficiently sufficient for the Regent's grand plans. Influence of Taprotsky. We'll do nick.332.b. Whatever that means. Just to get some more influence. I don't want to lose that manpower, too, right now. I'm sure if we could roleplay a bit better and understand what it, that meant. You know, it might be a little bit easier to do it. Can withdraw some forces. And now Comey belongs to the Regent. It is done. Those foolish enough to stand against a Regent have been crushed, and with the aid of both God and the Sictifkar arsenal, none in the former Republic have a strength or will to challenge us. And yet the true work hasn't yet begun. The Regent is not yet content to simply wait for the Emperor to return to the fold and rule over the city-state. No. The Emperor will return to a Russia united, and the Regent ready to place a crown upon his head. Preparations will be made to bolster the Imperial Army, augmenting it with the ample supplies of chemical weapons we now possess. Furthermore, detailed plans for industrialization and modernization of Western Russia have already been drawn by the Regent's learned hand, ready to be put into action. The Regent has thus declared the reclamation of Western Russia begun. More of this shit, that's cute. Let's consolidate our power base a bit more. And now we wait. Oh wait, we gotta do the raid. I almost forgot. You refuse tribute? Well... <clears throat> the capital of the Komi Republic. Shiny, stinking. A rotten salmon in the moonlight. Cool air flows through buildings like hands through unkempt dollar bills into public spaces. Dripping neon white confusion on street signs and protest slogans. Crowds melt and ebb and gather, vicious, ephemeral. The new youth hang on the street corners, their tongues echoing all variants of political thought. Tense city, Comey fears. Tonight, hooded gazes coming in packs, like hyenas stalking prey. Everyone sees the storm, the hail-like rain falling in the distance. They come anyway, wardless of their engine, hearts stirring from crushing and cracking city. Comey is a machine, endless vistas of fret flesh working like gears. They are spanners. Their time has come. Police guards, eyes held like pistols, steady, unyielding, quietly lethal. Barriers, flesh and plywood holding back into the streets. Whispers turn to talks, then to yells. Thuds echo, not thunder. Wood on flesh, unmistakable. Points, screams, then all at once. As an orchestra slamming into a new note, a sea breaking on undiscovered tide. It's action. One, two, three shots, and the crowd overwhelms the pistol ear. As its sound fades, new one be new ones replace it. Windows shatter like chandeliers. Falling from the city sky ceiling, here and there, trash cans lit a flame, left to roll about. New gestures for a court turned upside down. The government, the businessmen, the army, the Jews. Suddenly all are enemies, and all must be brought to trial. Siktiv Kar is a court, a trial run for the ju people's justice, and its citizens are vengeful, vengeful judiciaries. Nothing happens. Rather, everything happens unseen. Street sweepers arrive to clear the flaming wreckage. Dirt-smeared signs are cleared by noon. Everything, everyone, of course, says nothing. This will not be the last, we know it. And the regime has been stabilized. 
So the monarchist influence is pretty strong already. Lusitov's finally in our grasp, another Herculean task must be performed, balancing the desires of various rights factions in our statelet. The influence of various factions within the court front is as follows. The most influential leader of the front is Tabaritsky. That's all we really need to worry about, honestly. And there we go. We'll get working on this stuff, cause I gotta we gotta get back on the ball here. Let's see, Clash of Shadows. We pretty much have locked down our base. We don't have much of an opposition going for us. So the state's been secured. With the end of a weak republic and the instatement of our new order under the combined banner of a passionary, the time has come to begin the reclamation of Western Russia. The consolidation of Ustat Solsk under our new order, thus, will begin immediately, until we are capable of shattering any enemy that dares move against us, be they internal or external. Our foes are many, but our people are strong, and if all else fails, the arsenals below Siktivkar can always be pressed into service for the true Russian state. Croatian winter. I'm sorry. Those were the only words which escaped Elena's mouth. The, the defense was failing. All around them, her safe house was burning. Her last desperate attempt at freedom had gone awry. Right as paramilitary groups were winning against the final garrison defending the would be refugees. The hallways were filled with gunfire, screams, the crackling of wood. All that they loved, all that they fought for, was being finally eviscerated in front of their very eyes. Good men died to prevent this. Worse men fought to reduce it to ash. Yevgeny coughed heavily, a stray bullet still lodged in his lung. The clenched hand grasping at his gunshot wound was becoming weaker by the second. He didn't believe that he would die here, not in some rundown records room, slumped over against a table with one of his former enemies at his side. The pistol on the ground was empty, much like the air in his body. Perhaps if there were still some bullets left, they could fight one last desperate, clawing attempt for liberation. Perhaps they could end their life. Surely whatever the fascists did to them would be worse for than death. We promised. And we failed. As he again came, came closer to death, the door to the record room was slammed open with a kick. A member of the fascist paramilitary, with the rays of his PPSH, filled the duo with bullets and added to brass piles on the floor. After a quick look around the room, he looked down at the victims. Whoever they were didn't matter now. Russia would move on without them. With that concluding thought, the soldier exits the room and tucks his head low to avoid the smoke around him. It's never easy. Well, none of that matters now. After a chaotic period of violence, our faction has secured control over the Komi Republic and for now, remains safe from any kind of coup attempt. However, that is not to say our position is stable. The lingering remnants of our past political rivals still remain in the country and could potentially cause issues if they are left to their devices. We have no choice but to take prevent preemptive action. We must find these dissenters before they can cause serious damage to our efforts to destabilize, to stabilize the situation. The security forces stand ready to conduct a search on key targets from several opposing factions suspected to have a presence in the country. Their base of power will wither away without a strong leader at the reins, so a surgical strike targeting the head of its sending groups is necessary. Once these, found tar these targets are found, we have a variety of options available for dealing with them. Time is of the essence, however, for it is very possible some may try to flee the country before we have a chance to catch up with them. Let's get to work. So, our current goal is to arrest and imprison them. Shoot to kill. They do the same to us. Locate them. Track them down. And now, let's secure some reliable infrastructure. 
One could say that the Republic made a strong effort to deter the bombers and repair the roads that they damaged. One could also be entirely wrong. The state of the infrastructure throughout Ustatovsk is utterly dismal, with numerous trade routes and valuables paved, valuable paved roads. Completely ignored by the old government, in favor of investing more money into government corruption, failed welfare programs, and grandiose unworkable projects. We must rectify the situation at once, repairing old infrastructure and constructing new roads to move goods faster, and allow our soldiers to re redeploy more effectively. So our influence game is pretty tight already, so I'm not too worried about doing anything, really, on that regard. So we just have to find Zidanov, Bukharina, and Stalina. We've already took out Suslov, Kostic, and Vasnensky. Let's get night vision, why not? Great. Successful. They're digging up caches. They're working on their defense plans. They're doing God knows what. They're talking to the Germans. Ew. Alright, what do we want to work on? We're improving all of this. Not expertise, actually. Expertise, expertise. There we are. Industrial expertise. Anyway, I think we have to go to here, ladies and gentlemen. So thank you as always for watching. If you like this video, leave a like. If not, feel free to dislike. And we'll see more of this content in the future. Hit the sub button for more uploads, uploads every weekday. As well as every Saturday. If you have any comments, feedback, concern, anything of the sort, leave in the comments section below. I read all the comments I get. I appreciate any all feedback you might have for me. If you want to chat, play games, anything of the sort, check out my Discord, if you want to send me bucks my way every month, I have a Patreon. If you want to see me do a sort of live, I have a Twitch. I'll put you down in the description box below. That's really it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you as always for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.